Hello, everyone. It's Friday. That means it's Chat with Mac. We're glad to have you on this last week, almost, of January. It's, it just flew past. Uh, thank, you for, uh, <laughs> thank you for those of us, or those of you that have been looking at our uh, podcast here. We appreciate all your feedback. And for those of you that are new to what we do, welcome, welcome, welcome. Nadim, how's it going, sir? Uh, going good. Just, you yeah. know, just... Uh... Get, making a little progress every day. Yeah, yeah. We 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 got some man, I'm telling you, man, we PCSN has some exciting things that we're doing. Um, and like we were saying last week, Nadine stays busy and barely gets a chance to breathe, but uh it's because we're always adding new layers to what we do to make things efficient. But one of those things we're gonna actually talk to you about is our um SOC or security operations center that Nadim is getting ready to roll out. And uh, it's another exciting thing that we're doing. You know, top of mind for Nadim is security. And <laughs> with what has gone on the past year leading up into this year, uh, as a matter of fact, Nadim, I sent you an article. Now the government is really starting to hone in on a whole uh, security as a cybersecurity. But uh, tell us a little bit more about the SOC. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned the government. One thing uh, before we get into SOC is there are going to be a lot more regulations coming down, yeah, um, coming down. For, yep. for all kinds of businesses, not just, you know, the financial or, or you know, trading companies or what, or those type of companies is going to be across the board. So, so uh, you know, get yeah. ready for that. Now, uh, the SOC, the Security Operations Center, is kind of like the NOC, which is a network operation center. So the network operation center makes sure that the network is running uh, as it's designed. It's running within thresholds. There's no issues. If there are issues, if they get any, if any thresholds are reached, then the NOC gets involved and remediates and, and takes care of those issues. You know, it could be maybe one of the switches is at 100% capacity. Then the NOC logs in and figures out why is a certain switch at 100% capacity? What's causing that? Is it a rogue device? It is a known device? What Whatever is causing it, they need to remediate. In the same way, the SOC will get alerts when certain thresholds are reached. For example, it's an easy as, let's say a machine gets infected. Let's say an automated system tries to clean up the infection and it fails. That's a time for a human to get involved. Now the SOC springs into action. The, a human logs into that machine and, and tries to remediate what is causing that. Now, of course, the human is doing this when the automated system has already disconnected the machine from the network. So basically the machine is isolated on the network the human can still come in, and this is over a over a separate connection. So the human can still come in and look at what's going on, dig in deep, figure out what happened, basically do kind of like a forensic analysis of what happened. If 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 it is an infection, clean it off, put the system back into its pristine condition, and then enable it back on the network. So that's what the SOC is there to do. And it's a it's a very uh, time-consuming role because you have to be up on everything that's going on in in the security world, right? So you you know you have to be uh, you have to be able to figure out what at a very low level what processes are running at what times and what memory how much memory, which segments these processes use. Because a lot of times what the malware will try to do is it will try to take over a certain segment of memory that really belongs to another application. And that is a red flag. That's how our AI, over time, it builds up uh, this, um, uh, it builds up this uh, profile of, of every machine. So it understands how a certain machine behaves. And then it kind of figures from there when when certain thresholds are hit that, hey, this is anomalous behavior. I'm not going to allow it. I'm going to isolate it. If It's going to try to remediate it. So if it can't remediate, isolate the machine, get the SOC involved, have them fix it. And that's the, you know, it's, it's a very labor-intensive process. As soon as the SOC gets involved, 
that's a human who can, you know, the human could be spending two, three hours on a machine doing the analysis because we don't just want to roll the issue back. We don't, we don't just want to fix the problem. We need to find out what happened, where did the problem come in from? So, so that's the thing is we need to figure out, you know, why it happened in the first place so we can prevent it from happening again. Um, a lot of times we, we find out, for example, something came in either via email or via a certain, you know, website, uh, uh, or there's even been instances where somebody had plugged in a USB stick and it came in from that USB device. So, so the, the SOC really needs to figure out how it happened. So let me ask you a question. How is that different? And, you know, I, this isn't something I'm well versed in, but I'm very interested in. How is it different from the intrusion prevention um, uh, program that we have? Um, because if I remember correctly, that's also similar where, unless I'm thinking of something else, where there was uh, humans that would uh, remediate if there was a, a breach of some sort. Or maybe I just had that wrong, but, you know, I'm just wondering about that. So the intrusion prevention system that we have, that is a separate layer. Basically, all that is doing is okay. it's running at the at the boundary of the network, just looking at traffic coming in and going out. Now, in this case, the example that I gave you where, let's say, somebody stuck in a USB stick, intrusion prevention system doesn't know it because that USB stick did not pass oh. through the firewall or the router. That some somebody plugged it in. Prevention system doesn't even know about it. So, so that's where this additional layer of security comes into play is, you know, and, and we're calling this, this you know, this uh, service uh, CyberX, and it's uh, spelled C-Y-B-3-R. So instead of an E, it's a three. Um, so, so that's where CyberX comes into play, and it will detect anomalous behavior on the machine. Now, here's what's important. There's a gazillion software out there that will detect malware and, and and viruses and things like that. They will only detect things that they know about, and that's the difference. CyberX will intelligently build the machine's profile. Anything that's anomalous, it will red flag it. So it, it uses AI on the back end. So it, it, it actually uh, learns over time. Uh, and as user behavior evolves over time, it learns and accommodates for it. So it knows when something is anomalous for a specific device and a specific user, because a device may have multiple users logging in at different times, right? So it builds this profile of a machine. And then when anything goes outside of this or beyond this, so, so, you know, this profile then is used to determine, you know, certain thresholds. And then once, you know, let, let's like that example of somebody plugging in a USB stick, you know, some piece of software all of a sudden is now on the machine and it's running in memory. And now it's trying to profile other processes running on the machine. So let's say a user has Outlook running. So Outlook EXE is running. So now this anomalous uh, uh, rogue software is trying to read the memory that is actually that belongs to outlook.exe process so it's trying to read what kind of emails may be going in and out or or what's going on in that process and that's just an example so when this happens the ai in cyberx is going to know that so and so process is trying to take another process's memory this cannot be allowed. This, mm. this is not normal behavior. Hey, I'm going to block this software from doing it, and I'm going to remove this. Now, a lot of times, the automated, uh, automated methods that we have, it may not be able to remove that rogue software. That rogue software may be sitting in a certain place where if you remove it, it will make the machine unstable. Basically, you end up getting a blue screen of death. We don't want to do that. So if that's the case, if the if CyberX cannot remove it, it's going to throw a flag and send it to the SOC. Now a human connects to the machine, and this is a 24-7 operation, by the way. Now the human connects to the machine and figures out what this is, where did it come from, and what is it trying to do? So, so not only are we remediating and doing the forensic analysis, but we're also building the knowledge of 
the security community as a whole, because the more we can learn about these rogue processes, the better everybody mm. gets educated about it. So we share this information with the security community as a whole. So over time, we get better and better at at determining you know issues and 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 a lot of times, we get information from other companies in the security community. You, you know, like I, I know we've we've gotten things from Huntress, for example, um, where they've told us about certain process, what they do, and what they're trying to do, and who's behind it, and you know, interesting information like that. It's it's boring to normal users, but uh, <laughs> so 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 that's that's what this uh, you know. And, and let me just share a, a screen uh, here real quick, if I can. Okay. All right, so so here, you know, we have um, the the service uh, description, and and these are all the different modules a typical uh, security software should have. Um, now, of course, you know, on, under the example, we have we have all different platforms out there. So we have Sophos, Sentinel-1, uh, IBM, Forcepoint. We have a bunch of them in there. And Huntress is right there in, in, in the, uh, uh, the the second last or the third last uh, column there under SolarWinds. So, so the checkboxes here show us what kind of protection each one of these software have. Now, we intentionally set out to design a software that will check all the boxes. We wanted to make sure that we provide the best protection we can. The reason we wanted to do that is because we anticipate newer threats yep. coming up in the near future. Yep. Threats that are going to be more of like zero day exploits or zero day threats, uh, you know, people call them. Uh, so basically we don't know about them and uh, they, uh, they will, they may have been sitting on your machines and you don't know, and all of a sudden when they activate, they do bad things. Or they may be sitting there, they may be exfiltrating data from your machine and you don't even know about it because a lot of these software that you may be using don't detect them because all these softwares are based on definitions. If they have a definition that knows about a certain behavior of certain bad software, then it'll detect it. If if it's not in the definition files, it's not going to detect it. That's why it's so important for for these softwares to always be up to date, always have their definitions up to date. Not so with CyberX. With CyberX, we're doing something different. So of course we're doing, you know, we have the next gen AV, we have endpoint protection and, and response. We have all of that. Uh, but the the bigger thing that we have is the user behavioral an analytics. And that's the AI piece that, that that I talked about. So that is the piece that learns over time. And by the way, the only other company that does this right now is IBM. You know, uh, IBM has that to where they can analyze uh, the behavior. So so anyway, so you know that's the missing piece because if you can do that, learn you know learn about the behavior of all the processes on your machine then you can know when something behaves abnormally, right? So think about it this way. There's a piece of software that's sitting there dormant on your machine. And by the way, this is a real world example. So we've we've installed CyberX on machines that had other antivirus and anti-malware softwares on there. And CyberX had alerted us to this anomalous software that nobody else detected. Um, so there's a piece of software that sits there and it's dormant. All it's doing is it's not doing anything bad. It's just keeping an eye on what all is happening on the machine. So it's 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 checking what is Outlook EXE doing, what is Word EXE, WinWord EXE doing, what is Excel EXE doing, what kind of what kind of data is flowing back and forth between these processes. So it's looking at what's going on with these processes. None of these other softwares will know that this rogue piece of software exists until one day it activates and does something bad, like it takes some of that data and sends it off somewhere. That's when they'll detect. Or you know, somebody detects it because it, this rogue software did something bad, updated their definition files, and now the software can detect it. CyberX detects that from day one. So CyberX does not need to know about this rogue process because it understands it as a rogue process based on the behavior of the pro process. So and that's where- 
let me, let me just something. Let me just ask you a question because this is this is interesting. So I see that CyberX has pretty much <laughs> everything, and then when I'm looking at some of the the other vendors, are you telling me that in order to get that level of protection, a company will more than likely have to buy individual? modules or separate or from separate vendors I, i'm just curious because it, it seems like cyberx is given the full spectrum yeah so in the past a lot of msps actually have eight or nine different products that they use to protect their customers oh, wow yeah so wow. and 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 the the theory behind this was you know being an msp the 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 theory behind this was that hey there needs to be just one entity that can do all this as opposed to finding eight or nine different products because when you have individually eight or nine products the costs are through the roof you cannot come at the price point of of you know what cyberx comes in at so you cannot be at like that you know it's like it averages out to like twenty dollars an hour uh, twenty dollars a month per device it's like you can't reach that price point i mean just just one or two of these things in this checklist, like Sophos and Sentinel One, individually they're around, you know, fifteen twenty dollars. How can you have all of these and and still be in that at that price point? And that's what we set out to do was have one product that can do all of this, and 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 not just one product, but but also we we have to have the remediation process in there. And that's where the SOC comes in, the, the, the Security Operations Center comes in, right? It needs to be 24-7 because what if somebody's working late at night and they're, and something happens on that machine? We need to have the SOC jump on it right away. We can't do it, oh, we'll do it next day. No, it, it, security doesn't take a nap. You know, security doesn't sleep. So, that's true. so we need to have this 24-7. And, and that's you know what we did with this where we we had everything built into one product now the other the other side of the equation is if you have eight or nine different products running on a machine each one of those eight or nine products are taking up resources on that machine that was another bad thing you can't do that on on for example uh, a server where you have 30 users logging in you end up using all the resources just for your security software what are the users going to do how are they going to run their chromes and words and outlooks so so we needed something that will run on on servers that do uh uh allow multi-user logins and still have a very small footprint not take a lot of resources, but still be able to do what we wanted it to do, which is the work of all eight or nine different security software plus the security operations center in there. So that's what we Amazing. did, and 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 we are we are kind of like for for fixed cost customers, we're almost going to make it mandatory. We have to do this to be able to secure customer networks. It, it is essential that we do this to secure customer networks because what we are detecting down the line is more zero-day exploits. We are detecting more hacker uh, activity. The hackers have become so much emboldened now by mm -hmm. the past attacks. Oh, I mean, it's just a natural progression of things to see it increase with all the success they've been having. You know, I'm just hoping exactly. that the small businesses have been paying attention. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is when 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 your security software is definition based, it is it can only be reactive. It can only detect stuff that it knows about that's in its definition file. It cannot be proactive when it's behavior based. Now it's proactive. Now it can block software. So even if it's good piece of software, let's say somebody screwed up and and they messed up Excel exe file and all of a sudden it's acting like a malicious piece of software taking up other software's memory or doing weird things well behavioral based software will detect that and it will block Excel exe from doing bad things now i say Excel exe it could be Excel exe from microsoft or it could be Excel exe from the bad guys pretending to be your actual Excel exe when it's really not how do you detect that? Well, behavior analytics is going to detect that, uh, block it, take remediatory reaction, and if Excel EXE is very well written, which usually, you know, these malwares are not very well written, 
if it's exceptionally well written and it blocks the automated method uh, methods that we have from being able to push it out of the machine, the human element comes in. So then humans get involved. And then we do forensic analysis. Then we figure out what it is, what happened, where did it come from? And then we share that back with the security community. And now all of a sudden the whole world knows, oh, there is this new threat that is out there. Everybody beware of this. You know, if, if your Excel EXE is this size and it has uh, this uh, CRC on it, uh, or it has, uh, you know, uh, this date on it, that's not the right Excel EXE file, right? And I'm just giving you an example, N nothing wrong with Excel EXEs that we know of. <laughs> um, so so it's, it's, it's critical for small business, you know, I mean, so, you know, large business can, can afford to have eight, nine different pieces of software just for security, but for small business, it's cost prohibitive. And CyberX comes in, and I think, right now is the right time for for something like this to to really protect small business and you know i, I know a lot of times you know people say oh well you know twenty dollars you know that's that's kind of steep well if you get infected once and a human had to get involved yeah. to clean it up and do forensic analysis it's more than paid for itself i mean think about yep. it you're not you're not going to clean off some malware in in an hour it's going to take you probably a day a day and a half just, I mean, that's all included. I mean, I don't know how you can get a better deal. <laughs> you can't. That's the thing. I mean, you really cannot get a better deal at peace of mind for your business. And I don't know how, quite honestly, um, business owners are, and I, this might sound a little bit exaggerated, but I don't know how you're sleeping at night just depending on the bare minimum to keep your business protected. That's amazing yeah. to me. Yeah, and I, I've had those conversations with with <laughs> CEOs and presidents, you know, where where I ask them, you know, hey, so how are you sleeping at night? And they're oh, I sleep like a baby, man, I sleep good. And and then I tell them all about the state of their network, and it's like, you know, you might be sleeping good, but I'm not. It keeps me up at night because I know the state your network is in, and we need to yeah. fix this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and it's not that I want to scare them; it's just that. It's always a much lower cost to protect yourself as opposed to do a cleanup after the fact, right? So it's kind of like it, everything on the left of boom is lower cost. Everything on the right of boom is a higher cost. And boom is where that breach hits you, right? So everything on the right is a higher cost. Everything on the left is a lower cost. And and that's just the way it is. Uh, it's it's better to uh, prevent something than to do cleanup after the fact. That's true. It's always a lower cost to prevent it rather than do a cleanup. Um, and then that's why we are we are uh, excited to launch this uh, this uh, application this service. Uh, we're going to we're going to go live. Uh, I think we're thinking April one, and. Um, uh, we've been testing. Well, I mean, we so so this this has been in development for over a year, and we've been kind of working at it, and we've been testing it, and and we had to get the AI just right. You know, AI needs to be trained. You know, we have to have a good baseline. There's a lot of technical things in there that that we have to do, uh, and all that is done. And we've been testing it. We've been you know working it, and we've been testing it against machines that were supposedly protected by some of the other uh, systems out there uh, just to see, you know, how well it, it, it does. And uh, it's a, uh, it's a surprise. Some of the guys in, in the security operations center, which we've, we've been building it. in parallel. So it's it. uh, yeah, it's, it's been one of those things where we thought some of the machines were, were clear because, they were fresh installed. Hey, it's a clean machine. Uh, until we installed this and and found some anomalous behavior, uh, I won't go into details. But it's, uh, you know, you may think your machine is good and clean and everything, until but then not. a breach happens, <laughs> and then you wonder how could it have happened? You you right. haven't done anything, because right. two years ago, one of your kids got on your machine and did something. They got on some website, maybe they downloaded a game or something, and that had been sitting on your machine dormant for for 
year or more than a year until one day it activates and does bad things. And you, you can't figure out, you can't pinpoint what happened all of a sudden. You didn't do anything. And you're right, you didn't. It was it happened a year or more ago. So so that's where CyberX comes in. And and uh I think it's gonna really be be a game changer um as far as um as far as us going into the AI, the 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 AI of things, you know, as uh, you know, because this is one of those things where AI works on the back end, yeah, tech users, yeah, and all that heavy lifting is done by the AI as opposed to a bunch of humans sitting there and manually creating signatures, which has right. been what historically has happened. Right, right. Now, just to just to. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to piggyback on something that Nadine uh, said, and I, this has happened before. Um, and I, I don't, I, I could, if I had insight into the number of businesses that this has happened to, where the bad guy was just sitting and waiting and waiting for the right moment to strike, and then boom, it happened. Uh, it's happened so many times, and there, there was a specific company where this happened to, where uh, you know they lost a great deal of money, but it seems like that the bad guys are just sitting there and waiting and waiting. And then finally, when they got the, 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 uh, I guess you could say when the fish took the bait, they found what they were looking for. They struck. I'm, I'm willing to guarantee that there's upwards, maybe 60% of 60% of businesses that right now, the bad guys just been in there waiting and you have no clue. I, I'm willing. It's probably higher. But yeah. you know, and I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm willing to bet it's higher than that. It's just the world we live in nowadays. I mean, the 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 bad guys are just so brazen uh, in their attacks uh, because there are really not that many consequences. I mean, yeah, the rebel group gets caught and disbanded, but how many other groups are out there that we haven't even. I mean, we don't even know how many members they have, much less try to locate a member. I mean, that's true. We don't know what we don't know. Um, and it's like you said, when one dies, three spring up anyway. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, look at it. There's, there are there are companies out there who sell software to, for example, decipher passwords, brute force for software to 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 break into passwords. I mean. There are companies that are doing that, and and um, these are you know perfectly legal companies. I mean, you know, but but the thing is, if you can buy a piece of software for twenty bucks or even download it for free on some of these uh, hacker forums, then what is stopping from you know that you know twenty year old kid from just going out there and oh uh, you know let me just do this oh nobody's watching you know what's going to happen I'm behind my computer. You know, it's that we are so disconnected from the reality. It's like we're behind a screen. You know, it's like when you when you are not face to face with somebody, you get this. You know, you get bold. You know, you, you're real brave yeah. when you're not face to face with somebody, right? Yeah. And that that thing comes into play um, until one day, uh, you know, the the authorities knock on your door and and you're like, how did this happen? But but not that it's happened to me. I, I'm just assuming that's how it goes. But but the thing is that. Uh, we anticipate an uptick in in breaches, and there, the more complex the software gets, the more uh, e the easier it becomes to get into it to to breach it because it's just yeah. so complex. So, so I think uh, with that, uh, Mac, we'll call it a day. Uh, we are one thing excited. Just about, one thing. Yep. Just yep, one thing. Ahead. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. What Nadim has talked about. February 18th, you're probably going to have a ton of questions, specifically for CEOs and business owners. Please reach out to me, call me, email me, send a pigeon. I don't care what you do. You want to be here for this meeting, uh, this summit, excuse me. Nadim is going to be pouring this type of information and and it's it's such it's so important. It's yeah, so and, important. and 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 one one thing you know for CEOs the summit that's coming up that's we're not going to talk the technical stuff. We're going to talk business. We're going to talk numbers. Yeah. We're going to talk uh, your competitors. We're going to talk industry as a whole. What are other people doing? Yeah, you know, 
so that you can make better decisions for your business. That's Absolutely. what we're going to talk about. That's what, that's it. That's it. So everybody right. uh, have a great day. We'll, you know, it's a, it's a great uh, weekend. I don't think it's going to rain this weekend. So, uh, you know, hopefully everybody enjoys it and uh, we'll see you next week. See you guys.